in today's video, I'm going to give you a crash course on how to use Bricks Builder for WordPress. My name is Sam Harrison and I run a web design and development business based here in the UK and I use both Webflow and WordPress for my client work. However, when I use WordPress, I tend to use Bricks Builder for it. The reason being is that I actually think it's the best page builder for WordPress. It's not quite as well known as something like Elementor, but I think it works perfectly for both the complete beginner and for the more experienced developer. Some page builders tend to kind of aim at a particular sort of user group, whether it be beginners or advanced. I think Bricks is quite special in the sense it actually caters for both. I'm actually in the process of recording a course for Bricks Builder in conjunction with Flux. So if you end up liking what you see, go into the link in the description below and leave your email address to be notified of when that course is ready. Let's jump on and I'll show you how to use Bricks Builder. Follow along with this if you want to. So if you head over to bricksbuilder.io, scroll all the way down to the bottom, you'll see there's like an FAQ section and you'll see here it says, can I try Bricks first? So go and click try Bricks Builder. And all you have to do from here is then just enter in your email address and you'll be sent a link so that you can actually just give this a try and then you can always follow along with me if you want to. Okay, so I'll just get rid of this for now. So once you've done that, you'll then log into your WordPress dashboard, which will look something along the lines of this. My version might look a bit different to yours because I've got a plugin installed to make it look a bit nicer. But if you head over to the pages tab that you can see over here, you then probably have something that's called sample page or something. If you go over to that and then go on edit with bricks, we can then get started building out this website from wise.com. So what I've chosen is the business tab here and the page in question is going to be the track expenses one. So this is what we're going to be building. We're going to do pretty much all of it with the exception of the navigation and the footer. They're kind of, they would be videos in their own right. You can actually make this kind of navigation in Bricks too if you wanted to, but I might save that for another video. So what we're going to try and do is just make our hero section. These four sections here, we're going to use one of the native elements inside of Bricks for the accordion section as well. We'll make the call to action, and again, we might just miss out the uh, the footer for now. First things first, this is Bricks Builder itself. Now in terms of navigating your way around, you have an elements button over here, which gives you all of your different elements that you're going to be using to build the website with. Things like sections, containers, blocks, and div blocks, um, text, paragraphs, uh, buttons, and all sorts of other things as well that you may or may not want to use. So what we're going to do with this video is just get straight into it. Usually what you would do if you're doing this for yourself or a client is you'll go into your settings panel over here and you'd set all of your theme styles. So what I'm going to do in this video is kind of do it on the fly, but usually what you would want to do is set all this up ahead of time, things like your colors, things like your fonts, so you don't have to do it as you go. But just for speed, I'm gonna actually just get straight into that with this video, and we're going to just start building straight away. Head back over to our elements panel here, and first things first, what we're going to do is throw on a section. So a section in bricks comes automatically with a container inside of it. So a section is full width, and a container restricts the width of things that are inside it. So this generally has a set size of something like 1280 pixels or something like that, just to stop it from going right to the edge of the screen. So again, those kind of settings, you can actually change your container size to be whatever you want it to be inside of your theme styles. But again, I'm gonna just use the default one just for this video. Okay, so first off, what we need to do is give our section a background color. So what I'm going to do is just borrow the color from this website. So I'm going to be using some Chrome extensions for this throughout the video. If you want to just get these colors yourself, you right click and then go on inspect. You can generally find some of the colors inside of here as well. You'll see them dotted around. So what I'll do is with that color that I've copy and pasted, I'm going to click on my section and I'm going to give it a class of home hero. I could have just called it hero. So if you're not familiar with classes, this is something that allows you to use global styling throughout your website. If you're a Webflow user, you'll be very familiar with this. One of the benefits of Bricks Builder is that every element inside of Bricks comes with an ID attached as well, which is basically allows you to style that individual element, whereas a class will actually let you style multiple different things throughout the website. If that makes no sense to you right now, don't worry, this will make sense as we go through. So with our section selected, we're gonna go over to our style tab here. We're going to do background, and then we'll select a background color, and I'll simply paste in the color that we have here. And there we go. We now have our background color in place. So what I'm also going to do is assign a color to all of the typography inside of this section. 
Uh, I'm going to set it to white, even though this main text is going to be obviously green. I'm going to have it this way so that the paragraph kind of in inherits the coloring from that section itself. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So with the section selected, go over to your typography once again. I'm going to set this to be white. And now anything I drop inside of this section or container is going to come up as white. So what we need is a heading followed by some basic text and a button. So let's do that. So inside of here, we'll go back over to our elements panel and we'll select heading, we'll select basic text, and we'll select a button. A button has some predefined styling, which is why it hasn't turned white. But everything else, as you can see, the heading and the basic text is actually all white. Okay, so obviously this doesn't look quite right for now, so what we need to do is get this kind of styling inside here. So for our heading here, we're going to just give us a class of heading large. The reason we're doing that is that we're going to probably reuse this heading later down in the website for two of these as well, which is why we want to give it a class. Generally, you want to give something a class where it's going to be reused. If you're styling just one element that's got very particular styling, you can then just assign it to the ID, which comes sort of prefixed to every element in bricks, if that makes sense. But with our heading large, we're now going to set some, some uh, spacing to this. So if we go over to our typography, then you can see here for font size, we're going to choose something like 115 pixels. For the font family, it's not going to be a, an exact match because Wise, I think, have their own sort of special font, which is, which is called Wise Sans. So we're going to just choose something which is kind of similar. So what I'm going to do is choose this one. I'm not quite sure how to pronounce that, but there we go. Uh, right, so from there, I'm going to just copy and paste in the text from that site. And there we go. I'm also going to set the line height to this to just be one for now, so it's a little bit shorter. And I think that's all we need to do for this. Now, obviously, we also need to set the color to be the same as well. So what we're going to do, again, is just swipe the color for this. This color is actually used throughout the whole site, of course, so it's going to be used for multiple things. So still with this uh, heading selected, go over to the color here and then just paste in our color. And there we go. We've got what we want. Right, so we're getting there, but you can see obviously this is actually centered, so we want the same for the rest of our elements as well. So inside of the container, so all of our elements are sitting inside of our container, we actually want these to all be in the center. So for this one, I'm actually going to style the container, not by giving it a class this time, just by the actual ID, because we don't necessarily want every container to be all centered. You could set up a class for a centered container and reuse it, but just for ease and speed, I'm going to just uh, style it on the actual ID itself. So the way we do that, go over to content. I'm going to align cross axis here to the center and you'll see pretty much everything's moved with the exception of our heading here. What we also want to do is within this container, we want to have all of the text to align to the center as well. So if we now click on text align center, everything is all in the center and that's all good. Okay, so let's just finish off getting some of the rest of our text in. So we'll just copy and paste this into here. So that's all fine. Okay, so another problem you can see now is that this text is actually going right the way across our container, which actually is far too much compared to this one. So we're going to just shorten that a little bit. And once again, we probably don't want this to be for every single paragraph. So we're going to apply a uh, styling just to this one. Actually, I think we may just give this a, a special class just for the hero. Um, so what I'm going to do is call this one paragraph large. So this one is actually slightly larger than the normal paragraphs on the site. So we will give it a class after all, actually. So make sure the basic text is selected. And then we'll just call this paragraph large. When you're writing classes with multiple words, make sure you have a dash in between them. Otherwise, this won't work inside of bricks. So hit enter. And we've now created a class for it. And what we'll do is make this so this is 20 pixels. And what we'll do now is actually, we'll actually come off this. So we're no longer styling the actual class. You can see as I click it, it highlights it. If you want to go back and style the ID of the element, so we're now going to retain the basic styling of this, but we're going to change the width of it slightly. And we don't want to do that for every single paragraph. So make sure you come off it so it's no longer being styled. What we'll do now is go to our layout 
and we'll give it a maximum width of something like, let's do 600 pixels. And that's pretty close to this. They've actually got a, a widow on their version, which is a bit of a no-no. So you want to try and keep, uh, you don't generally want to have one word per line like this. So we're actually going to leave our version as it is, I think. So that's all going to be fine. Uh, and what we'll also do is now we're actually starting the ID. I'm going to just actually manually move this down a little bit. So you can actually change the, the, the margin by dragging on the page with some elements too. Now again, you generally want to actually set this up ahead of time. You don't generally want to do this as you go. But again, just for this video, it's just, just for speed. Okay, so we're looking something similar to this now. It's not exactly the same, but it's pretty close. So next up, let's set up our button. So the current button obviously is yellow, which we don't want. So we are going to give this one a class because we're going to reuse this button throughout the site. So what we will do is just call this button primary. You want to call it primary. You don't want to give it a color necessarily in case branding changes later down the line. It's not the end of the world, but again, it's just a good practice to get into calling things by primary and secondary colors and, and things like that. Uh, so what we're going to do now with our class selected, go back over to our content tab. We're going to have it as a pill shape, which is what they've got here. So let's make sure we have, it says circle. So let's click on that and it does it for you. You can obviously apply a radius to it if you wanted to as well. But just for ease, I'm going to use that. Uh, this would link, of course, to an external, uh, sorry, a, 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 an internal page if you wanted to. There's all sorts of things you can choose for this. We would use internal page. I don't think I have anything set up apart from this one, so we'll just choose that for now. And on the actual button itself, we're going to make it a little bit larger. So we'll go over to our styling panel here, and you'll see it has some default padding. We're going to increase this a little bit. So we'll do something like 25. So you'll see here, I entered it in just one side. What you can do is click over here so they link the sides for you. So if I was to do that again, and I type in 25, you'll see now both left and right have now changed. You have another option to link all sides too if you want to, so that's a huge time saver, really, really useful. Uh, over here, we'll use the same kind of thing again, so we'll make sure the opposites are linked, and we'll do 10 for that, so it's a little bit larger. In fact, we'll actually do this larger again on left and right, so we'll do something like 35, and then maybe we'll do 20 for this one. Okay, so it's not exactly the same, but close enough. In fact, a little bit shorter. It's going to bother me if I do that. So let's make it say 15. Make sure they're both linked, otherwise they'll be different. Okay, that's good enough for now. So what we're also going to do is make sure that we have um, the styling for this as well. So let's make sure we have the same color. So we'll choose for our background color of our button is going to be obviously this green color. It's going to be our primary color. Now again, if we had set this up in theme styles, we wouldn't have to do this. But there we are. We have sort of our main hero section pretty much all complete. You'll see they actually have a hover, which we can do as well. So what we can do for that is click on the button, and then we then go over to our option here for states. Again, if you're a Webflow user, this will be familiar to you. Click on that, and then on hover, we're going to affect how this button looks. So we're going to give it a different background color on hover. So if we go over to background, over to the color here, and then we'll type in the same one again, but we'll actually just make it slightly lighter when we hover. So something like that. Again, I'm not doing this exactly. I'm just giving you an example of how it's done. So that looks pretty much okay to me. So now if we come off that, you'll see as we hover over it, it changes color. And you can affect the easing of how that goes as well. But that's actually looking pretty similar. There's not much of a delay actually between these two. Okay, now very simply, what we have to do is change the text on that. So what does that say? So it's get your account. So we will do the same. So we'll do get your account. Okay, so we'll save that. And we now, if we just view that as well over here, you'll see this looks pretty similar to this. It's not exactly the same, but again, this video is more about showing you how to sort of structure things properly. Okay, so that's all fine. Let's go back to where we were and we'll start the next section now. So the next four sections, actually are very similar to each other. So what we're going to do is create one and then we're going to duplicate it three more times and then just change little aspects of it. So what we're going to do is create a two column section. Now there's a few different ways you can do that. Uh, you can use what's called flex or you can use CSS grid. I will show you the built-in option that comes with bricks when we, type, when we click on a section. So when we click on a section here, 
you'll see that we have an option um, for actually using this option here, which is for layout. And you can get lots of different columns in here. And this is by using what's called Flexbox. Now, what I like to do is actually ignore this and actually kind of use my own version. Uh, so what I like to use is CSS Grid. So that's what we're going to do for this. And we are going to basically give this container a separate class now. So what we want is a two column section or a two column grid in our case. So with the container selected, we're going to give us a class. And this is going to be grid two col, which stands for grid two columns. And what we're going to do now is go over to content and rather than display flex, which it currently is, we're going to make it set to display grid. Now there's a few different ways you can create columns by using CSS grid. I'm going to just use this way I'm about to show you because I think it's easier to visualize. So we're going to use fractional units. So what we're going to do is type in on the grid template columns. We're going to do one FR with a space followed by one FR. So at the moment, nothing is showing up when I do that. You can see it's just a blank space. However, what we're now going to do is throw in two blocks from our elements panel. And you'll see now we have like a two column type thing going on. If we go back to our container over to content, which we're already on, we're going to actually apply a gap as well. This is going to create a gap between the two blocks, the two content blocks that we've just thrown in. So in the gap, what we'll do is we'll type in 100 and you'll see as I did that, it's now created a space between these two, which is what we want. Okay, so from there, what we're going to do is now start entering some of our content. So in the first one, we have an image on the left, and then we have a heading, a paragraph and a button on the right. So let's start doing that. So over here, what we'll do is add on a heading and then we'll add some, we'll actually use this text from over here We'll actually just copy that and then paste this inside. It's going to be dark because it's it's inheriting the styling from the section by default. So we didn't style this to be white, which is why I could do that. And then we'll also borrow this button too. So we'll copy that and paste this inside. Now, like most page builders, you can actually drag these different elements around in different places. Like, but also like most page builders, it's not always the easiest thing to do. I tend to like to just click the element I want something to go into and then again, just kind of click it into it. Or you can actually move these things around on the structure panel as well, which is probably a little bit easier this way. Okay, so that's all fine. Uh, oh, actually, I've done it the wrong way around. So what we'll actually do is just move these around. So I can actually now show you an example of this. So you'll see on our structure panel, that we have this one here, which is first, this one second. All I'm going to do is now just move these in a different order. So now we have this one on the right hand side. So I could have made out that was on purpose, but it actually wasn't. Okay, so on the left hand side, we're now going to add in a image. So I've actually already loaded these on just for speed, but all you would need to do is just right click and save the image for you to do it yourself. So on the left hand side, we'll go over to our elements panel and then we'll go and find image, which is over here. Then we'll click on that image and then we'll select an image from our media files here. And the first one I believe is this one. So we'll insert that. No, it's not that one. One minute. <laughs> there we go. Right. So image is now in place. And again, just like most page builders, you have sort of controls for image, the size of it as well, uh, how it actually fits. So this is currently set to fill. You also got contain, cover, none on scale down. We'll leave it as fill for the moment. Uh, we may want to align this actually at some point, which will actually, how are they doing it? So it seems to be centered, so that's all fine. We'll get to that in a minute. First of all, what we're going to do is just change our heading size. Now again, you would probably set this up yourself before doing it, but I'm gonna just do it on the fly for now. So this won't be an H3. It's currently set to an HTML tag of H3. Generally, you want to keep your headings in sequ sequential order. This is largely for screen readers. Uh, so those that have visual impairments who use screen readers, it's nice for them to see headings in a certain order of importance. So this would be your H1, which we've actually got it set as. And this one will need to be an H2. For each new section, generally, you'd use an H2. So that's what we will do. Uh, we'll actually give this a class, this heading. Uh, we'll set it to H2. And we'll just call this um, heading medium. And then we'll set up styling for that. So the size of this, what have they got here? So let's see what they've got. They've got 50 pixels, so we'll do the same. Again, it may not be exactly the same because we've got, I think, a different font, but it'll be it'll be close enough. So font size will be 50. 
So all of these are in pixels. You can use rem if you want to. Obviously, this will be huge if it's rem. So you've got all the the, the different kind of units that you'd expect to see. Uh, this actually, because of the difference in sizing, is probably a little bit too big, I think. So I'm going to do something more like 40. I think that looks a bit better. Okay, so next up, I'm going to just copy and paste some of the text in. So I won't do this for all of them, but I'll at least do it for the first one. I mean, it's just boring you watching me copy and paste text in. So let's do that. And then for this one, with actually the paragraph large, we actually probably don't want this one. We actually want it to be a different class. We'll actually get rid of that and we'll create a new class for our sort of normal paragraph. Um, so again, you set this as a default, but let's just do it anyway. So we'll do paragraph. And this is going to be set to a font size of, I think it was 18 that they did. Okay, so that's all fine. We'll just copy and paste this text in as well, just for speed. And there we go. We have pretty much what we want. Uh, now again, you would maybe want to change the the, um, the margin for this manually on the actual headings themselves, but just for speed, I'm going to do it on the page so you can see it. Okay, so you'll see at the minute we have our image, which is kind of up to the, the top left-hand side. On their version, it's actually centered between the text. So what we're going to do here is now just align this. So our block, so our block in bricks is a div block set to flex, basically. So you can see here, it says display flex. What we want to do now is just get this so it sits in the middle. And we're going to um, align the main axis to the center as well. So that's going to center things out. Okay, so we have our first column pretty much all complete. Um, what I'm going to do now is basically duplicate this three more times. So you can very simply just click on duplicate or you can use your keyboard shortcut too. I'll just show you like this just so you can see what I'm doing. And then now we have four sections that are basically exactly the same. However, from here, what we want to do is have our, our text and image inverted. And we also have a kind of gray section for this part too. So I'm gonna just swipe the color from this so it's the same. And then we'll get this inverted too. So this is where classes are going to come into play once again. So for the second and fourth one, we're going to apply a class. So on the section itself, we're going to go over here and we'll just type in BG gray. And now over to styling, we're going to set a background color and we're going to just choose, choose the color that we just copied from the site. And there we go. And what we can also do is for the fourth one down is now just basically add that in again. So you'll see other classes are listed. You can start typing it in, or if you can see it, click on it and it will turn it gray automatically for us. So that's basically how it works. Okay, so we are getting there. Uh, so you'll see how quick that is to just kind of reuse a section rather than building it over and over again. Uh, what we are going to do though, is now just set the way these are laid out. So the first one we have image first, text second. Next one down we have um, text first, image second. So this is very common in web design. You see kind of you know the inverted columns as we go down. So very simply, all we have to do is for this second one down, we're going to choose the parent element of this image, which is the block. And then if we go over to content tab over here, you'll then see at the bottom, there's an option for order. Currently it's set to zero. I'm gonna just type in number two. And as you see, when I did that, it basically just switched over to the, the second column along. And all we need to do is the exact same thing for this one down here. Don't click on the image, click on the actual block itself. And over on order, click on two, and that will move over. And there we go. All we have to do now is just change out our images to fit. So let's just do that very quickly. So this one was next. And then this one was, I think, this one over here. Where is it? Is that one? Was it this one? Terrible memory. <laughs> there was that one. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> okay, last but not least, let's just choose this one that we have over here. And there we go. We have basically our four columns all set up. We'll make sure that's saved. And then we'll view it on the front end, make sure it's refreshed. And you'll see we have pretty much what we want, which it looks very, very similar to the actual version over here. Again, not exactly the same, but basically the same kind of thing. I'm not gonna bother pasting in all the different text. You have to just obviously imagine that, you know, <laughs> I, I'd done that. Um, one thing I've noticed straight away that I, I did miss out was that the, the line height for our heading medium is way too large. So we'll actually go back over to styling here and just very quickly change that. 
on typography. So we'll set the line height to one and you'll see when I do it, they'll all change because this is a class. So they're all doing it at the exact same time. This is why using classes is so important. If we hadn't made that a class and I had forgotten like I just did, I'd have to go back in and do that for every single heading. So this is where the benefits of using a class really come into play. It keeps everything consistent throughout the website. Okay, so that's all pretty much fine. Uh, we do need to perhaps center some of the text along the images. Um, I think the actual text amounts are different here. So if we have more text, then we probably wouldn't need to do that. So we could just duplicate it so there's more. But again, you get the idea. If you want to center this, we could do, you go over to content and just align this to the middle. And there we go, we have what we want. So hopefully all of that was easy enough to follow. We're pretty much there apart from a couple more sections. I'm actually going to just center this one as well. Oops, sorry, wrong one. Okay, so next up we have our fact section. Uh, so we're actually going to use a native element inside of Bricks for this. Uh, so there's actually two different types of accordions you can use in Bricks. But first of all, what we're going to do is add on another section. So we'll go into our elements here, click on section, and we're going to apply our background gray class that we have, because this one is also going to be gray, as you can see. Now, this may look like it's all the same thing, but you do want to section these off, actually. So this is quite clearly a different thing to what's going on. So this would be a different uh, section entirely. Um, you could, again, give all of these sections a particular class name if you wanted to. Um, it would depend. You probably don't need to for these because they're all kind of quite generic. Um, they're all kind of the same. We don't need to worry about, you know, giving them a particular class if all of them have the same kind of layout that they actually have. If you want to add the BG gray class, you can do, of course. Uh, and also you can go back in and add a class later on if you want to as well. You can actually remove the styling from either the ID or from the class itself. Okay, so with this particular one, uh, we have our BG gray, uh, but we actually want to get rid of the padding on this, sorry, yeah, the padding on this section so that it's not um, got the same above and below. The reason being, if you look at their version, this is closer to this, so it's not got the actual top padding for this section. So what we'll do is on this, even though we have the, the BG gray, click off that for now. So now we're just styling the ID. What we'll do is go to style, go to layout, You'll see by default we have 120. What we're going to do is type in zero, and that will zero that out from the top. And then now inside of our container, we actually want this to be a, a quite a, a lot smaller than our normal size container. So you could give this a, a particular class if you want to. However, if you're not going to be using that again throughout the site, you could just, again, leave it on the ID. I think for speed, that's what I'm going to do. Uh, and on the actual width of this, we're going to give it a maximum width of something like... 600 pixels is quite small, maybe maybe 700 actually. Where are we? Okay, so that's all fine. And inside of our container, we're now going to throw in a accordion option along with the heading as well. But let's do let's do the heading first actually. So we'll go to our elements tab. We'll go on heading, and for this one, we're actually going to use the heading we already have created over here which was heading large. So we'll actually give this heading a class of its own because it's slightly it's slightly smaller than the main large heading. So what we could do is actually just apply the heading large class to this and put on an additional class if we wanted to. So if we go to heading large, we have what we want, but obviously that's green. So what we could do now is just maybe give this additional class of dark, which will allow us to change our color for it. So we'll just give this a, our dark color. And we'll also make it so that the styling for this is a little bit smaller as well. Uh, so we don't need it quite as large. So let's see how big their version is. So that's going to be 62. So we will do the same. Okay, so on font size, we'll do 62 and that's all good. And this will just be facts. So what we'll do from here is just get this centered. So on the container itself, uh, we'll align this to the center on the cross axis. And then inside of our container, we want to have an accordion. So inside of Bricks, there are two types of accordion. You can see as I start typing it in, you've got your bog standard version, which is just for text. You then have an accordion nestable. So the difference between the two is that the first one is literally just for text only, uh, all rich text as well. Whereas accordion nestable gives you more sort of functionality and more 
um, more options in terms of what you can put inside of an accordion option. So if you want to have video or images or whatever it is you wanted, that one gives a bit more options available to you. But since we only need text, I am going to just choose a box standard accordion. And then all we'd have to do is make sure we select it down here and you then get special accordion options where you can enter in the title. So all we'd have to do here is just copy and paste maybe some of the text that we have. This would be our title. So that would be the first one. And then we'll get rid of our subtitle because we don't want that. We want just main text now. So if I just do one of these, I'll just copy and paste this. And then paste that inside where right, it says content goes here. And there we go. We have one of our accordion set up. Now you'll also see here we have options for dynamic data. What you could also do, and what is probably a better idea, but this would be a very long video if I showed you that, is that you'd want to use something similar to what Webflow and Framer does, for example, with CMS collections. So the way you do that in WordPress is by using advanced custom fields or something called Metabox, where you would create a, a database of, of different things that you could then draw that data inside of the front end of the website, or particularly in this case, inside of the accordions. Now for this example, I haven't done that. And if you'd like to see how that's done, we can maybe do that in a different video. But just for now, I've just pasted that inside. And you can see we have this fully working accordion, super simple, and actually looks very similar in terms of how this one actually functions as well. If you wanted to play around with the, um, the icons for how they turned, there is a way of doing that too. So you can use animations inside of Bricks as well. There are actually various different plugins that you can use alongside of Bricks like Motion Page or Bricks Forge, which allows you a similar level of complexity to say something like Webflow and Framer, and it uses GSAP animations. So that might be a topic for another video. Um, what I'll do just for now, I'll actually just delete the second one. I'm actually just copy and paste a few of these just so you can sort of see how it would look. I'm not going to spend all this time just copy and pasting text in. This is purely to show you how this would actually work. Okay, so we'll save that and we'll have a quick look at how we're looking. So pretty good and it looks pretty much identical bar some of the fonts compared to that one as well. So we're getting there. Last but not least then, we're going to set up our call to action and we need a background image for this. So if we go back over to the builder here, we're going to enter in another section. This section is going to have a class because we'll probably use this throughout the entire website. So this will be our main call to action. So what we'll do is apply a class on the top left here and we'll call this main CTA, which is main call to action. Okay, and for this, we're going to have a background image. So we'll go over to styling and we'll go on to background and then we'll select a background image. So we'll select this one over here and we'll insert that. And there we go. Again, you've got some, some controls on how to actually position this. We actually do want to set it to cover. Uh, it's currently set to repeat, which we don't want. So we want no repeat. And then inside of there, we very simply just have a heading and a button. So that's simple enough. What we'll actually do is cheat a bit here and we'll copy that one. It's not cheating. It's just, um, it's just being efficient. <laughs> uh, and then we'll actually just copy and paste this text over because it's basically the same thing and there we go now obviously this is again not quite as wide as that so we're going to affect the width of that a little bit so on our, our main heading here or heading large you'll see none of these are currently lit up so we're not we don't actually want to style the exact heading for this we're going to just apply a maximum width to the id in this case so go back over to styling and layout and we're going to give it a max width and we'll do something like 700 pixels. That's fine. Then inside of the container, once again, uh, we're going to just style this particular container on its own. Or if we had a center container, we could do that. Did we do that up here? I can't remember what we did. Oops. Okay, we didn't. But again, if you're going to use a center container throughout the whole website, you'd probably want to give it a class. But since I haven't done that yet, we'll actually just manually do it with this one. So we'll go over to content and we'll align it to the center. And we also want to have everything in this container to be centered in terms of typography as well. So go over to typography and then text align to the center. And there we go, we've got what we want. And what we simply do from there is perhaps just add in a button from here. This button may actually be slightly different to the one we have, but just for now, I think that's going to do us pretty much fine. Okay, so I think we'll probably leave it there for this tutorial with the exception of just talking you through one last thing. Uh, if we save that and have a quick look at how we're looking, you can see it's pretty similar to what we have going on here, 
It's slightly different in terms of some of the sizing, perhaps to do with the fonts. The images might be a bit smaller as well on one of them, but essentially we have created this almost the entire page in a relatively short space of time. Um, again, this would actually be even faster if I had done what we said, which is that usually what you would do is go over to your settings panel and then spend some time setting up your colors or your typography, your you know, container size, all that kind of thing. Do it ahead of time. But again, that would be a pretty boring video to watch, which is why I kind of did it the way I've done it in this video. Okay, so one more thing I want to talk about before anything else is that obviously like most page builders, you get options to control things on different screen sizes. And Bricks, of course, is no different. So what you can do is choose your different types of screen options here. You can see at the moment that this text is far too big when we get to tablet, mobile landscape, and mobile. So what you can do very simply is click which one you want to alter. You always want to alter it this way down. If you alter it from here, it won't change it for all of them this way, so you have to do it this way. It cascades downwards. So if we choose tablet, we probably want to have our heading large slightly smaller than that, I would say. So if you wanted to change it, you'll see it's currently inheriting the 115 pixels. Maybe we want something more like 90 for tablet, when we go down to mobile landscape, again, probably shorter still, something more like 60. And then if we wanted to change this for mobile, we could do if we wanted to. So hopefully you get the idea. Also, when it comes to changing columns, you'd want to do this also when you get to smaller screens. So let's say when we get to mobile landscape, what we want to do is not have a two column grid anymore. We want to just have it so it stacks on top of each other. So what you do for that in this particular case, you currently see on the grid template columns over here, it says 1FR and 1FR. All we do now is get rid of one of these so they stack. So if we now do something like 1FR, you'll see it's now stacking on top. And because we use the class, it's done it for every single version of that. And again, if we hadn't used the class, you'd have to go back in and manually do it for all of them, which is why this is so important. And then now when we go down to our mobile view, you can see this works perfectly fine as well. I think Bricks is fantastic. It's hands down my favorite page builder for WordPress. And as you can see, hopefully, that was relatively easy to create a page very, very fast and you have all of the benefits that comes with using WordPress and all the different ways you can extend it. So let me know in the comments below if you would like to see more on Bricks Builder on this channel. And again, if you're interested in the course that we're currently in the process of making, make sure you sign up to the waitlist below. For now, thank you for watching and I will see you on the next video.